Hello and welcome to video 3 of the angles video series. In this video we're going to learn about measuring angles. When we measure angles we'll need to know about a protractor. Here's a protractor. You'll notice that it has a whole bunch of numbers on it. Uh, we'll explain how we use it in uh, several examples. Uh, but the parts of the protractor are pretty important to us. This uh, arrow is pointing to what we call the center of the protractor, right at the bottom there. It's a pretty important place on the protractor. It allows us to use it wisely. And uh, we'll look to put the center of the protractor in a very special place. We'll line up the center of the protractor with the vertex of the angle, the corner bit of the angle where the two arms meet. That's where we'll try and put the center of the protractor nice and accurately. There's another part of the protractor we'll uh, need to look at and we'll call that the baseline of the protractor. I've marked it in red there. It goes all the way across but we'll kind of mostly only be using one half of it, the right hand half and we'll line up the baseline of the protractor, we'll line it up with one of the angles, one of the arms of the angles. <clears throat> so here's an acute angle here. We'll need a protractor to measure that angle. Step one is to line the center of the protractor up with the vertex at the angle. So see the corner of the angle there, it's lined up with the very center base uh, of, the, uh, of the protractor, that's step one. Step two is to make sure our baseline of the protractor that goes across the bottom there is lined up as precisely as we can make it with one of the arms of the angle. And then for an acute angle we'll read off the smaller number. You'll notice there that we have two numbers. We have 140 just here and we have a 40 degrees. Because we're expecting an acute angle and acute angles remember are between 0 and 90 degrees, well 40 is the most sensible answer there so we'll look to uh, read off the smaller number and so our answer to that is 40 degrees. That's our measurement of that angle and you'll notice the angle itself has the marking right here. Oops has marking a red marking here indicating it's the smaller section of the angle. That is the one we're uh, referring to in this particular case. So that's measuring an acute angle. When we're measuring an obtuse angle, very similar. The steps are almost the same. Step one is to take our protractor and line up the center of the protractor with the vertex of the angle. Notice the center of the protractor is right in the corner where the two arms of the angle meet. We'll make sure that the, the baseline of the protractor, we line that up with one of the arms of the angle. And this time though, for an obtuse angle, we'll read off the larger of the two numbers. We have two numbers over here, 50 and 130. Now an obtuse angle, the definition of an obtuse angle that we saw from um, previous videos in this series, uh, is that uh, obtuse angles are between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So we'll pick one of the two numbers that fits with that and uh, 130 fits nicely. So our answer to that question measuring that obtuse angle 130 degrees is our answer. Now reflex angles are a little bit trickier. You'll notice here that the marking is all the way around the longer way of the angle. Really there's two angles here, a shorter angle and a longer angle all the, all the way, the long, the long way around really. So <clears throat> we'll take our protractor, we'll line up the center of the protractor with the vertex of the angle once again. Step two is the same as the others, the other examples, line up the baseline of the protractor with one arm of the angle. Now we do something a little bit different because we're looking at the angle all the way around, the long way around there. For a reflex angle, we're actually going to measure the smaller angle, the short way around, and then we're going to take it away from 360 degrees because um, we know that one full revolution is 360 degrees. So if we just take away the bit that's missing from 360 degrees, then we'll be able to find the, the, uh, the bigger of the two angles there, the long way around. So let's see how what happens here. Uh, you'll notice that we've got 70 degrees lined up there. Now that's obviously the distance around here, the bits that, that's uh, not, we, we don't really want to measure, but we'll measure that first and take it away from one full revolution to get our answer for this reflex angle. Bit tricky, but still. 
So we'll do 360 minus that 70 degrees. It's a bit strange because we've actually measured the bit that we don't need, but we're using it to find our, our final answer there. So our final answer there, the, the long way around that uh, angle, all the way around here, 290 degrees, because we first measured this bit that was missing, the 70 degrees. So I hope that helps. That's the way we measure three types of angles there, acute angles, uh, obtuse angles, and reflex angles. So watch the video again if you're not sure of it, but um, I'm hoping that'll, that'll help you know how to use your protractor to measure angles. All the best, and we'll see some more uh, concepts about angles next video. Remember, for any maths concepts that you'd like to find out about, peterblakemaths.com is the place to go. See you next time. Bye.